Hi everyone and welcome back to another edition of what has joined my movie collection. Guys, so everything I'm going to show today has arrived through the month of February. So let's jump straight into it with the premium releases and we will start with Everything Blues Gladiator Edition, which is an absolute stunner. So guys, Gladiator has had a few premium releases previously. You know, HD Zeta have released two uh, different one-click editions um, over the sort of past couple of years and Film Arena and the Czech Republic have also released Gladiator in a similar XL slip the same sort of width as this edition um, so everything blue and the next to sort of jump in with Ridley Scott's Sand and Swords masterpiece and uh, I absolutely adore this I think it's absolutely beautiful the effects that you can see on Maximus's armor when the light catches it is just gorgeous the Colosseum in the background is very sort of minimalist uh, embossed it's almost like it's been etched with a, a pin almost it's just incredible and it does follow around onto the spine and then on the back as well with the wheat on the back and then we've got the sword as well Maximus's sword which uh, again when the light catches it it does shine in the light which is awesome and I absolutely adore the movie I think it's one of Ridley's masterpieces after sort of Alien and Blade Runner so the fact it gets this treatment is amazing and what Everything Blue a company in the UK I've spoke about them a lot I love their work um, they've released this with the worldwide art 4k steelbook of gladiator which has been available in other places and um, but what they typically do with this blue pack range is release it with a whole bunch of not just art cards and postcards and mini posters what uh, other premium companies typically do they release it with so much more stuff um, so we've got uh, inside here <laughs> unfortunately I haven't opened it up yet uh, but it is a very sort of cool Roman flag um, banner which is awesome and we've got this incredible um, envelope here which will be filled with with art cards or postcards um but i'm hesitant to open it up because of the wax seal on the back just the level of detail that they've put into it is awesome and then we've got some character cards some artist renditions of the characters as well um, and it also came with a poster which i believe is a replica of what you actually see in the movie around the coliseum advertising the gladiator battles so absolutely amazing um the sort of time and effort that these guys put into these releases so this was number four of the blue pack range from everything blue now they haven't actually announced what number five is going to be yet which is a little strange usually that they know ahead of time or we as collectors know ahead of time what the next one's going to be um everything blue have just shipped their edition of boys in the hood which is on the way but it's not what they're classing as part of this blue pack range so um yeah it's exciting to think what their next title is going to be because i absolutely adore their work when they release these editions um schindler's list and king kong were absolutely incredible so uh, yeah very looking forward to to what they come up with next so guys i did get a lot of single premiums in this month i didn't buy any one click editions so they're all singles and i will jump next into hd zeta's shawshank redemption an absolute masterpiece absolutely love this movie um so this is such a cool lenticular on the front it's classic artwork um poster i believe at the time and then on the back we've got uh old tim robbins there um so absolutely cool movie and what hdz to do which i like um some other premium companies don't do this as much as hdz to is not only do they release newer titles that were very popular at the cinema made a lot of money and um, they go back through sort of the old sort of back catalog titles and look for editions or type of movies that they think will sell well or deserve these premium releases and um, Shawshank is absolutely one of them. It's a Frank Darabont's masterpiece. Um, so, yeah, very, very happy. Um, you know, HD Zeta were the guys that also went back and they did the original Blade Runner. They did, believe it or not, the original Jumanji, which turned out absolutely beautiful. So they're, uh, they're giving a lot of love to older movies that other companies might not think about doing. So very, very happy. Um, it is just the Blu-ray release of Shawshank. It would be nice to eventually get a 4K version of the movie. I think it would look incredible. But uh, for the moment, it is just the Blu-ray, which I have seen before. But this is now the nicest edition of the movie, the nicest packaging that exists. So very, very happy that I was able to pick this one up. Um, there was supposed to be more made than originally, or officially released, sorry. Um, 
yeah, something happened afterwards after they'd either manufactured them all or produced them. I'm not too sure what happened, whether or not there was an accident with a few boxes or something. But um, I know a lot of collectors did miss out on this. And uh, my usual way of picking up a lot of these premiums, unfortunately, did fall through for me. Um, so I have to give a big shout out to Media Psychos for um for basically having my back and uh, being able to get me an addition um, which is awesome these are now going for stupid money on ebay there's a lot of unfortunate scalpers out there who were able to get their hands on more than one and um, they're making an absolute fortune out of them so it is beautiful and very lucky i was able to pick that up for retail now next up is manta labs version of jordan peele's us i think this is the nicest lenticular edition that i have seen in a long time this blows me away it just changes from black and white to color between each character which is absolutely stunning it really is and the title changes from color so in hand guys i'm not sure if this video is going to even do it justice but uh, in hand it is absolutely beautiful the back artwork is Jeremiah 1111, which features throughout the movie. I'm not too too big on that back artwork, but this lenticular is stunning, absolutely stunning. And the steel book that Mantel have made, it's a worldwide exclusive steel book. You can't get this anywhere else. I am so, so happy that they used the poster art for it because that imagery is just <laughs> stuff of nightmares. It is absolutely amazing. Um, so very, very happy that that was used as a steel book we've got debossing on the title there and that's it everything else is just gloss um and it's just so freaky absolutely amazing so yeah um inside the steelbook again there's a few art cards and posters inside that envelope which is beautifully made as well and it also which i've taken out and displayed next to the steelbook it came with a pair of golden scissors which is awesome as well a nice neat little touch for the movie um, so yeah, this is the 4K release of Us. Uh, Mantelab did release a one-click edition for this, which had three slipcovers inside it. Um, typically, I always do pick up a one-click if I enjoy the movie. Uh, but for this edition, as beautiful as that one-click box looked, I just wanted this lenticular with that steel book. I thought that would be enough for me in the collection. I was happy with just that. So, yeah, very, very happy this turned up. And when I saw the lenticular in hand, it was uh, it was just gorgeous. So that was Jordan Peele's Us getting the premium treatment. Now, last in the premiums for this month was an order from Film Arena in the Czech Republic. And I got two horror releases which is fairly uncommon even though i've just shown off us um it's fairly uncommon for premiums um to feature horror movies um especially film arena their range they don't have too many horrors um but they've released a double bill this uh, this month with the recent halloween and the remake of pet cemetery so we'll start with halloween now this has a very nice leather effect to the box all over um hopefully the light can just catch up the creases that you can see that's made from this sort of faux leather material looks absolutely beautiful it feels nice as well nice and soft and then on the spine we've got the title and on the rear we've got again a creepy shot of michael and um, i wasn't the biggest fan of this remake i am happy that they are making more and that there is going to be another two coming out soon halloween uh, kills and halloween ends but um yeah this one i wasn't particularly um, i was excited for it but i wasn't sort of blown away by it when it came out i was a little disappointed they kind of retconned number two as well um i did always enjoy number two even though i know it's not as good as the first one the first one's an absolute masterpiece one of my favorite horror movies but uh, i'm excited to see sort of what they come up with for the next two so um typical fashion with film arena we get the world wide art steelbook this did get released in a few other places i know everything blue used this artwork on their premium release of this um but again film arena have jazzed it up with this lenticular magnet on the front which again was poster artwork for it so not really much movement in the lenticular of this one it's more just to give it a little bit of depth to make michael look more 3d when you're looking at the box so that's uh, it's pretty cool and again this is just the blu-ray release of the movie it's not the 4k edition even though the movie did come out in 4k um, I do have <laughs> a few copies of it. I'm saying I didn't really like it. Um, I've got a few copies of it and I do already have it in 4K. So this was more just a showpiece to have in the collection. And also it's got uh, a booklet behind the scenes documents um, and art cards as well. So yeah, very, very uh, cool addition to be made out of this sort of material, which is very, very nice. And 
last but not least in the premiums was Phil Marina's Pet Cemetery, the remake of Pet Cemetery, which I haven't actually watched yet. Um, Screen Factory have just released um, Pet Cemetery 2, the original sequel to the original movie. Um, so I'm waiting for that coming through the post and I'm going to actually do a, a sort of marathon of all three, one and two, and then this remake. So I've held off watching it. Again, Phil Marino have put one of their lenticular magnets on the front of the box because it is just the Worldwide Art Steelbook that was available in a few places. This is actually the 4K edition of it as well. So unlike Halloween, they have actually released the, uh, the Ultra HD version in this edition. And the magnet, it looks like it's just, again, I say I haven't seen the movie, it looks like maybe just a couple of creepy kids in the animal masks <laughs> that might be hiding out in the woods. Um, so that's the lenticular magnet for it. Not uh, Probably not the best imagery they could have used, um, but it's a nice, nice touch. I've always liked those lenticular magnets. And again, similar to the others, we've got behind the scenes documents, art cards, booklet, and all the rest. So yeah, that is Pet Cemetery. Some nice detailing again in the, uh, in the packaging, lots of sort of glossy uh, mini embossed bits there in sort of the wood. Um, yeah. Very, very cool. So I'm looking forward to giving it a go, but I am holding off until the uh, the sequel to the original sort of drops. So, yeah, very, very awesome. So, guys, that was all of the premiums for this month, all five of them. So let's jump into TV show box sets. Okay, so I have got an order I placed from JB Hi-Fi here in Australia. They did a buy one, get one free on every single tv show <laughs> that you could find so i picked up these two because they were the same price so it made sense to buy uh two editions at the same price because you were getting one free um so i needed or colin baker's season 23 of the limited edition doctor who sets which i've been collecting so i haven't seen any of these episodes before i didn't catch any of colin's growing up so i'm looking forward to, to diving into this when uh, when the time comes so that is awesome. And I also picked up the final season of Game of Thrones, another edition of it. Again, I said I wasn't a big fan, like a lot of people wasn't a big fan of the final season, but I've got like four, four copies of it now. Um, I have got the rest of the collection with the vinyl figures, the pop figures. Um, so I did need this just to continue the collection. I'm a completist. So um, not having the final season in a pop figure uh, format uh, edition, and would have bugged me so because uh, it was buy one get one free i thought it was absolutely worth it so i got both of those guys that is again just for show i won't open that up to watch it there's no reason to when i've got the uh, the 4k edition I'm, i have sat through it twice um, once when it aired on foxtel and once um, on the 4k um so next up in the tv show box sets was twin peaks David Lynch's absolute insane masterpiece. Um, so that came in this very, very cool limited edition from Z to A backwards, which is awesome. Um, Twin Peaks. So this is seasons one and two, and also the new um, seasons, oh, season, the, the sort of the, uh, the mini series that was released. Now this box is absolutely awesome with its sort of geometry, how it sort of opens up is very, very cool. Um, inside this plastic container was just this perspex sort of display stand of the characters. And then inside we have got some postcards, art cards. Let's see, let's just open these up. It's got a Velcro flap. And then inside is the discs themselves. Now, what is very cool about these disc i know some people have mentioned before that they don't like these cardboard sliders for the disc they, they can potentially ruin them as you're getting them in and out um but what i do love most about this packaging is when you fold it up it actually makes <laughs> twin peaks <laughs> i'm not sure if that was just a design um by choice um, or it just happened by accident but uh, i think that's very cool that this packaging when you actually unfold it all it actually makes twin peaks which is cool so yeah we've got the uh, the full sort of collection i think maybe one of the episodes is in 4k i'm not sure why they didn't release it all in 4k it's pretty strange maybe one of the new episodes as well is in 4k but not the whole season is so it's a bit peculiar um red room gallery as well inside here we've got a lot of different sort of 
material which i won't get out now guys because it will take a long long time but this was limited and it actually sold out here in jb hi-fi um this this box set itself it did sell out and um, so there was a few collectors that was waiting for it to go in the sale and it never did unfortunately because it just sold out too soon so i was lucky enough to pick that up straight after christmas when it uh, when it released I ordered it and then it finally arrived it was on back order for I think quite a while so I'm very very happy that that um, yeah that one's arrived and I've seen it before I'm not sure if I'll give it a go anytime soon it's very peculiar if you've never seen it but uh, I'm very happy to have that box now guys we'll jump into some special labels special label editions and the first one that arrived was from powerhouse their indicator line and it was this limited edition of an older black and white movie i'd never heard of before until i saw they were giving it this sort of awesome treatment and it's for dennis hopper's first ever movie his first acting role which uh, which is interesting to see um i typically grew up with dennis hopper as the bad guy watching Waterworld and speed um obviously um uh, Easy Rider was before my time and the last movie I'd never seen before. So, um, yeah, seeing Dennis Hopper in this sort of romantic tale was a complete change. And I really enjoyed it for, for a sort of typically, you know, old school black and white romantic movie. Not usually my go to um, on a Saturday night, but I, I enjoyed my time with this one. I thought it had a very sort of somber, um, upsetting ending almost. Um, and it did keep you guessing all the way through whether or not this girl that... Um, uh, Dennis Hopper was chasing this girl who works at a local amusement sort of fair on the on a pier. Uh, whether or not she is genuinely a real mermaid or not, it does keep you guessing all the way to the end. So, was she human? Yeah, I enjoyed my time with this one so much. And typical fashion with these indicator releases, the special features are just absolutely chock full of stuff. They really do give them a lot of love. So, I'll be honest with you guys, I haven't actually read the booklet that came with. I haven't watched any of the special features. I simply just watched the movie and I did enjoy it. So, it's uh, it's been given such a, a nice limited edition treatment. And um, yeah, very highly recommended if you haven't seen the movie. I did enjoy it. So, that was cool. Now, next up, guys, I <laughs> picked up uh, this movie here, Violent shit um, so it definitely lives up to its name towards the sort of last third of the movie now the reason i picked this up and we'll go into a few of the additions later um in the video towards the end is i was speaking to the producer and the editor and he actually also acts in this as well um a very very nice guy in germany called steve um he has been sort of involved in the making of these movies um for a while and i was speaking to him about a few additions that he had for sale um, and yeah, he was a great guy to deal with. And then it turns out uh, one of my friends on Facebook was selling this edition. Um, and it turns out he was actually involved in the making of it. It was such a weird coincidence. So I thought, well, I have to get it now. Um, never heard of Carl the Butcher before, but this, uh, this movie, this, uh, it's almost like a remake or a reimagining of it. I believe this was from 2015 and this was a co-Italian and German production. Um, Carl the Butcher though has been on screen, I think in Germany since 1989, there was, uh, maybe five, four or five, um, original movies of it. And this is almost more like a, a an updated version um the last third is very gory um if you do like your practical effects and your gore there's a, a scene where a spine gets ripped out there's, <laughs> there's a castration scene that uh, really will make your eyes water um other than that i didn't really have much to recommend about this edition and like i, said, I haven't seen the originals from 89 and onwards um I, they may be much better i'm not too sure but uh, this one yeah i doubt very much that i'll give it another go and um steve may be watching this video now i have been speaking to him and he did want me to send him a link when um when i post this so um hopefully he doesn't get too offended by me saying that but um yeah if you do like gore effects then there's definitely something to to be had from this movie um and maybe one day i will try and track down the the originals um so yeah this um this release it came with a booklet as well and um yeah it's released on blu-ray so that was violent shit carl the butcher now next up in the special labels line was one from eureka and that was this absolute masterpiece this limited edition slip cover is gorgeous alone but this uh, this movie i watched it yesterday i watched it and it blew me away um joe begos young director he's definitely a name to sort of remember and watch out for he's just done vfw which um, i haven't seen yet but it does look great it looks like a 
a sort of newer take on um, assault on precinct 13 uh, drug dealers trying to get their drugs back from these old dudes in a bar um so it, it looks awesome i haven't seen it yet but this is his i believe first movie or at least first that i know of and it was stunning the main actress in it she plays an artist who is struggling to get her piece done in time to present it in a gallery and it's um sort of you imagine she has had a sort of a hard life and um she's sort of cleaned herself up but she does resort back to drugs to to sort of finish the painting off um she ends up picking up some new drug from her old dealer called bliss um and when she's high on that she ends up engaging in a threesome with uh, one of her female friends and her male companion um and she gets bitten basically it's a vampire tale she starts turning into a vampire but some of the effects in this are so gory especially one way how she manages to suck the blood out of her neck i've never seen that before in a vampire movie but it was amazing and it's just so gritty and so imaginative and it's a bit of a psychedelic trip also because it is mainly her on drugs and um, but if you uh, you like sort of artistic sort of maybe independent movies that are really really well done you know the guys involved and uh, just full of talent so i I loved Bliss, really did so. That is highly recommended. Now, next up is <laughs> an American order that I placed um, from Amazon.com. And I think a lot of people would have in February picked this absolute masterpiece slasher up, My Bloody Valentine. Now, the treatment that Test Screen Factory have given to this is amazing. It's the uncut version, which has all the gore added back in, and it is incredible. Absolutely incredible. <laughs> We've had three movies in a row I'm talking about all the gore effects. Um, yeah, this is Oh, just it's it's up there with Halloween for me. I think um, if we're talking about you know in terms of sort of eighty slashers, My Bloody Valentine is <laughs> as good as Halloween as far as I'm concerned. Um, I've seen a lot of. Um, sort of 80s slasher horror especially direct to dvd direct to video and um, b movie type slashers there's just something about my bloody valentine that elevates it above all those others um, the acting the direction the dialogue none of it is cheesy or laughable or makes you shake your head it just it's a great movie from that period it really is and it is so surprising it didn't spawn sequels um the original artwork there i swapped it over because inside you do have the ability to change the artwork on the uh, on the slips um but yeah like i say guys I'm, I'm very surprised it didn't spawn any sequels or at least not to my knowledge it did um and i adore this movie i think it's brilliant and the picture quality on this and the reinserted gore scenes they are so full-on like far gorier than anything i'd really seen from sort of the early 80s um in terms of death like how they actually did some of those practical effects were just amazing so that was my bloody valentine I really really loved that movie too now i also picked up in the same order Old Jane Silent Bob reboot. Uh, missed this at the cinema here in Australia, so very happy that I was able to grab this early because it's not out to buy here yet. I don't even think this actually has an official release date um, to buy here in Australia, so I've got that early. And I have always enjoyed Kevin Smith, Jason Mewes, and Kevin Smith in the roles, so it's nice to see, or it will be nice to see them back on screen. I haven't actually had time to watch this yet. It only arrived earlier this week, so yeah, very, very happy that um, that one's in the collection. Now, next up in the order was this absolute mind-bending masterpiece the lighthouse um this is incredible again robert eggers similar to joe bezos um joe bezos <laughs> not joe bezos sorry joe begos um yeah this um this movie is just an incredible creation it really is but if you're looking for something just to unwind and relax and just enjoy switch your brain off this is not for you it is an absolute artistic masterpiece of direction of editing and of acting from both of them i mean willem dafoe is just insane in it he really is absolutely incredible if joaquin didn't win the oscar this year for um for joker then willem should have got it he is just far beyond anything i've seen him do before and robert patterson as well if anyone's sort of um, still a bit curious as to him playing batman you just have to watch him in this and realize what a good actor he is so yeah this movie on all fronts was just an incredible experience probably not one i'd want to watch too many times again i have no desire to sort of go back to it now i have seen it 
but I am very happy I have seen it. I mean, just the aspect ratio of it being, I think, 137, maybe 4.3, and um, feels very old school. The the black and white, um, you know, style choice, filming it in black and white, and just the old timely dialogue that these two actors speak especially Willem Dafoe he really does sell it as being this old lighthouse keeper that's been sort of on the sea for years um so it's incredible it really is I can't, I can't really say much too much about it I don't want to give away sort of what happens uh, basically just the notion of isolation and going insane I guess um it's almost like the director filmed an actual nightmare how a nightmare you'd imagine it to be it's just getting getting worse and worse so um yeah i think this is a, a masterpiece achievement so um robert eggers the director of the witch i think the witch is probably more accessible than this movie um there's a little bit more to sort of enjoy and re-watch from the witch um he is very in a, a sort of an acquired taste i think you do either love him or you hate him but as a visionary as an artist and seeing cinema as a form of art to create something um yeah i think he's an amazing director so yeah the lighthouse was awesome now from that masterpiece onto this absolute turkey <laughs> hudson hawk oh my god what a piece of crap um i also picked up no mercy and vibes as well so these are all part of the same range from mill creek entertainment these old vhs um sort of retro covers so hudson hawk <laughs> it's a really bad comedy this one was actually written by bruce willis as well um probably one of his worst from that sort of period to be honest um he, he did make quite a few good comedies i did like death becomes her but this um was just terrible richard e grant as the villain was bad as well um so unfortunately i did sit through this when it arrived i <laughs> seem to remember it being better than it was um and I, I just uh, once i'd finished it i realized actually no that was a piece of crap so that was Hudson Hawk no mercy though I did enjoy this reminded me of the old sort of times of uh, renting videos with my parents and sitting there on a Saturday evening sort of getting to watch these sort of 90s uh, 80s and 90s sort of action thrillers um a bit soggy in the middle um once Richard Gere actually meets up with Kim Basinger and uh, sort of goes on the run with her um it gets a little bit a little bit dull um until the end when there's a big shootout in a hotel which is pretty cool so yeah that was um that was no mercy i did enjoy my time with that one again and vibes jeff goldblum and uh, cindy lauper an old singer um i haven't seen this before but i did watch the trailer and i thought it looked quite fun it's got colombo in it as well um so yeah um, i'm willing to give this one a go and because it's part of the same series i just threw it in with that order it wasn't uh, wasn't too expensive i think these ones are only about eight or nine dollars from the us um typically they don't have any special features or <laughs> any sort of audio options so they do tend to be quite cheap right guys so i also picked up a few local releases jb hi-fi had a 30 percent off sale on every blu-ray so i picked up a few and the first one was ma which again i enjoyed i am a nice small little thriller um, a bit creepy it's nice to see octavia spencer in a leading role as well i mean she's been in movies um for so many years i saw her originally in um bad santa <laughs> she's very funny in that it's only a small part but uh, it's nice to see her get a leading role she can carry you know um a leading movie and she was great in it so ma i enjoyed i don't think i'll return to it anytime soon um but yeah it was pretty good um i also grabbed the nightingale now this is another director um similar to the others i've mentioned um which is absolutely amazing i think she's jennifer might be wrong jennifer kent yeah jennifer kent directed this so the Barbadook was her first movie which i thought was a great sort of entry into horror for her i thought it was an absolutely amazing movie and she did a great job so she's come back with the nightingale which is her second full feature film um set here in tasmania um, which uh, again intrigued me um now this is such a harrowing tale um of revenge it's a rape revenge tale at the end of the day but it's done in such a different way that it's not going to be considered with i spit on your grave or last house on the left it's something completely different but when the act happens towards the start it's about within the first 30 minutes or so it's one of the hardest things I've ever had to watch. I mean, um, there was talk of Irreversible when that came out, that rape scene at the start is very hard to watch because the camera never cuts away. It's just the whole act. This is edited, and um, it's just what she has to go through and what happens during that 
sequence it's very hard to stomach but uh, it basically gives you the whole plot of why she basically goes off into the tasmanian wilderness to track down the men that did it um, and why she risks her life doing it it's basically um almost like a, a friendship tale where she uh, she befriends um, a native aboriginal um to help her track down these men that did it um and at the time, because it's set sort of in the 1850s, maybe I'm not too sure, 1825, yeah, 1825, um, the, basically, <laughs> the white man had invaded um, Australia at the time, they were in Tasmania, and they were basically wiping out the locals, which, um, you know, it's a horrible sort of time of history for this country <laughs> me being an englishman who's moved to <laughs> tasmania this movie is about these englishmen that are doing these atrocities so um again it was quite um you know quite strong resonating i guess with me i'm not i'm not a horrible guy who's moved here to do horrible things but you know the history behind this country i've moved to was very very shocking and this movie I enjoyed it from start to finish. And the same with The Lighthouse. It's filmed in 4.3. Um, I think it's 137 um, aspect ratio. So you've got the black bars down the right-hand side. Um, so it's filmed in a square, not widescreen, um, which is an unusual design choice. But I'm guessing it sort of to to draw you into sort of that period, that era. Um, they don't want to make a movie like this look too glossy and too Hollywoodized. So it was a good choice. And um, yeah, it was strange in this one month I've had two movies with that sort of aspect. Um, so guys, I also picked up Offspring, another horror. <laughs> We're all pretty much horrors. Um, Offspring, so Jack Ketchum, author. Um, now I said to you last month that I picked up Darling from Germany, that uh, movie that's part of a trilogy um, by starring Pollyanna McIntosh. She directed Darling. Well, this was the original that I had no idea really existed. I didn't know The Woman, um, Lucky McGee's The Woman from 2011. I didn't realize it actually had the first one so i tracked this one down on ebay and i watched all three i had a trilogy and i i enjoyed them um offspring is good for what it is for the low budget for the low run time i think they did a good job and um, the woman is the standout of the three but i did quite enjoy my time and this is a couple of gory scenes in it as well and it is quite quite shocking and quite emotional what happens to this family so um yeah the offspring i enjoyed and uh, maybe a week or two after i actually received this um arrow video have just announced that they're releasing the woman as a limited edition as part of the arrow video range and they're throwing this in on blu-ray for free so yeah if only i'd have waited i could have uh, i could have got my hands on the arrow edition instead but um who's to know that's the nature of the game of collecting you never know what's around the corner so um yeah i was happy to at least get my hands on this blu-ray edition off ebay and then um, finally give the trilogy a watch so, guys, I also picked up, just very quickly, um, Anna, the Luc Besson movie, which I haven't actually seen any of these four yet. But again, these were 30% off and they were buy one, get one half price. Or I can't remember what it was. It was buy two, get one free or something like that. So they were very, very cheap. Anna, Greta, Booksmart, and The Catcher Was a Spy. So I haven't watched any of these yet. This one looks intriguing to me. There's a lot of good names in this one. Paul Giamatti and Guy Pearce. And we've got Jeff Daniels. He's awesome. Mark Strong, Paul Rudd. And uh, the wonderful Sienna Miller. So, yeah, that one looks um, looks interesting. I don't know much about that at all based on a true story. But, um, yeah, they were bought cheap from JB. Yeah. Also picked up a few 4K editions as well this month. The first one being this absolute atrocity dark fate now this movie does divide a lot of people i've read um online on a lot of my groups some people like it some people don't and, uh, unfortunately i'm on the i'm on the the side of i think it's an absolute turkey um really is poor considering that linda hamilton came back to reprise the role it had james cameron's name on it um but i absolutely adore this steelbook i think it's amazing the actual artwork they've gone ahead with uh, gabriel luna's terminator he's the best thing in the movie the fact that he can actually just sort of <laughs> create a second version of himself one with the sort of endoskeleton and one with sort of nanotech is amazing is the best thing in it and the action scenes in it i mean it's directed by tim miller so the action scenes are very impressive but i just i didn't like it i thought considering salvation gets so much 
hate um so many people sort of hate salvation genesis i can understand but salvation at least they tried something different it was set in the future it was at a time when the human race was basically towards extinction this was just a rehash we've seen it all before um and it just felt very lazy writing to be honest the story was just rehashed from two rehashed from three and to a degree rehashed from genesis as well so it was pretty disappointing i was expecting something different and the fact that uh, Arnie's T-800, um, basically his objective was completed, his mission was done, he had no other sort of reason to stick around, so he became... Now, apologies if you haven't seen it, this is going to be a spoiler, a mini-spoiler. Um, they basically gave him the role as a interior decorator, this ultimate killing machine. I always believed it would have been better to have him as an exterminator, um, killing cockroaches, mice, that type of thing, because he is an exterminator. That would have been far, far better than basically doing kids' bedrooms. There's one joke in the movie where he does actually mention how he was arguing with a father about what type of decoration should feature in his young girl's bedroom. I was like, nah, this, this has lost me at that point. Surely James Cameron could have stepped in and said, this is a bad idea. But... Um, I am a completionist, and even though I didn't like the movie, I couldn't stand not having a Terminator movie in my Terminator collection. So that's my justification for getting it. Um, similar to Gemini Man, I heard so many bad things about it, but I was more interested in seeing the 60 frames per second aspect for the movie to see how sort of hyper real it looked. And personally, I think it did damage some of the scenes, like especially the motorbike chase scene just looked terrible. And I'm thinking that's because of that high frame rate. It just looked almost too real. Um, and basically, I think it took you out of the movie. I think, um, you know, you almost looked like you were there on set with them right behind the camera or looking through a window. In some of the sort of more softer scenes where the characters are just talking and you've got beautiful backgrounds, the ocean and, you know, the, the cityscapes looked amazing. But I think for an action movie like this, I, it didn't quite work for me. Um, I have experimented a bit with the motion smoothing on my TVs. I do have it switched off if anyone's interested. Um, but I have experimented. I have watched movies with it on. And um, this was basically like having it on the whole time without the artifacting around the imagery. So... Um, not just that, but the movie itself I thought was quite boring as well, to be honest, considering it's supposed to be another sort of Will Smith Hollywood action blockbuster. I thought until the end, um, there's a pretty cool shootout in this small town and in like in a, a hardware store. Um, but other than that, I thought it was just pretty dull, to be honest. Ang Lee can do a lot better. So, yeah, I don't think we'll be seeing a sequel to that anytime soon. Um, well, look, talking of sequels, I picked up Maleficent, um, Angelina Jolie's long overdue sequel, but I don't think the first one was too well received. That's probably why it took a while. Um, this one was pretty forgettable, to be honest, like the first one. Um, Michelle Pfeiffer has always value for money. She was good as sort of the evil stepmother. Um, Angelina Jolie, uh, Maleficent character um she's uh, she's a fae she's a fairy um basically we get to see sort of her the rest of her race and sort of the world the home world they've created where they've been sort of pushed out by humans and how a couple of those want to rise up and take the world back so it had a pretty neat sort of war element to it and there's a big fight scene at the end which was pretty cool but ultimately i imagine in the next couple of months i'm going to forget everything about it so it did look uh, look very nice in 4k though so that was, that was cool and also another sequel, Zombieland 2. I saw this at the cinema and I loved it. I loved the first one. I think the characters are great. I've always loved Woody Harrelson. I think he's awesome. Um, so yeah, Zombieland 2, double tap. Um, a great, great picture quality in 4K. It looked absolutely amazing. And I just enjoy it. You switch your brain off, have a good sort of two hours uh, entertainment, zombie slashing comedy action. So very happy. This eventually got a sequel. It was long overdue. I know they tried to do a TV show at one point, which sort of flopped. But uh, very happy that all the guys came back for the sequel. And um, yeah, I enjoyed it. So happy to pick that one up. Now, I missed off these ones, guys, so I'll just quickly jump through these as well as part of the buy one, get one free TV show sale from JB. I caught up with my CW shows, so I got the fifth season of Flash, I got the fourth season of Legends, I got the first season of Black Lightning, because I never picked that up, it's been out a couple of years now, so I picked Black Lightning. I got one of the near final seasons of Arrow, coming to an end on Blu-ray, uh, the seventh season, I got fourth Supergirl, and not CW. 
but um, I believe it's uh, back to form for True Detective. I wasn't a big fan of the second season, but um, yeah, this third season with uh, Marshall Allah Ali should be very, very cool. So very happy to add those to the collection. And again, they were buy one, get one free. So always like a bargain. All right, guys, so that is it for the TV shows, for the standard releases, the premiums. Now on to limited editions. Now I'll start with this one that I picked up from a local secondhand store. It's very rare I'll actually get anything from, um, you know, a, a sort of secondhand cash converter store. But uh, occasionally when I'm in there, there can be a few sort of hidden gems that I haven't seen before. And although there is a little bit of damage on the packaging, which is expected if you are sort of searching through the secondhand market. Um, I'd never actually seen this edition out in the wild before. And um, I do already have the Rocky collection a few times. Um, so I didn't buy this to watch. It was primarily just because it came with an actual robe, the Italian stallion, which I thought is a neat little, neat little um, inclusion edition. So being from the secondhand store, I probably won't be wearing this anytime soon. I have no idea what uh, the previous owner has done with it, but uh, it's very cool, guys. Okay, so um, it's got Rocky Balboa's Italian stallion. Um, yeah, dressing gown. So I'm very, very happy that I was able to pick this up and it was pretty cheap as well, to be honest. So yeah, um, even though it's not going to be watched, it is a showpiece and I will have to <laughs> try and squeeze that in somehow later. So I won't do it now, um, but I'll move that aside. So very happy that that one arrived. And next up, we will jump into one of my bust editions. Now, I um, usually save the busts to last, but this one I'll show now because I have got another edition, another bust edition, and I'm looking forward to showing you. Um, so this one, guys, this is a nameless media bust. Now, it is pretty horrific. <laughs> I will say if you are squeamish, you might want to look away and skip this part. Um, so this one was an unusual release for that pseudo documentary mockumentary faces of death so this is the bust here and it is pretty horrific to be honest uh they've modeled it on that famous scene where the guy's getting electrocuted and unfortunately his, uh, his eyeballs pop which is pretty nasty um i've only seen it once and it was more just a mur morbid curiosity when i was younger me and my friend tracked down a copy and we watched it um so this is an interesting release from the English media because they had all of these busts already prepared. They had the media book all made. They had the outer boxes and the artwork all done. And then something happened. They either lost the rights to release the movie. Um, or they never had it to begin with. And they mistakenly thought they did. So they went into production. But right at the last minute as they were about to send these out. They had to stop. They had to recall them all. Um, now even though they are still selling these busts. They are selling it minus the movie we'll hide that out of the way for a second minus the movie and minus the outer artwork for the box and minus the numbering card as well so basically they're just selling this bust i imagine to recuperate some of the money which is which is fair enough um so because i'm not really a collector of just statues and models it does have to be an edition that has the movie with it i track down a copy of the movie i think it's the 30th anniversary edition still sealed just for me to put in the back now even though this is designed for a thicker media book and this poor little blu-ray does look a, a bit lost in the back at least it turns it into an actual proper faces of death set now so um i'll be honest guys i have no desire to watch the movie um not when i've got so many other things that i'm looking forward to watching i've got no desire to sit down and watch it but in sort of the horror communities it is seen as a, a classic if you can use that word um, and it did spawn a lot of sequels as well so um, nameless media obviously liked it enough to warrant making such you know a very cool and very heavy detailed bust of the movie um so you know i'm happy they were still selling it and i was able to add it to the collection because i've got every nameless media bust so at least that continues on the collection so we'll move him back aside i don't think you want to stare at him for too much longer um and we will jump into a couple of laser discs that i picked up from a seller online now i think this is a first for these videos i don't think i've ever shown off any laser discs um i don't pick up too many um unfortunately my laser disc player did sort of break down a fair few years ago now so i have no means of playing these um but i picked up the criterion collection of seven 
on Laserdisc from a seller. Now, these were going for such a good price. I did jump on eBay to see how much other sort of sellers were, were asking for them. Seven alone was selling for about $250. And um, this guy I was dealing with basically sold it for $40. So I just couldn't turn it down. I thought it'd be a great piece to have in the collection, a Criterion Edition on um, Laserdisc. And also, Zombie. Dawn of the Dead. Again, I showed off a Dawn of the Dead edition um, last month. And now we've got George A. Romero's masterpiece on Laserdisc. Now, this has both the Argento cut, if I just move that, the Argento version. And underneath this, if I can get it without damaging it, um, underneath this, we have the director's cut, what they're classing as the perfect version. So, the Argento cut the European version again inside here. There's two massive laser discs. I'm not showing this off very well, guys. The camera angle. Anybody who hasn't even seen a laser, oh, anyone who hasn't seen a laser disc, just imagine they are like giant DVDs, which is awesome. But you only get about 30 minutes footage on each side, and then you've got to swap them over. <laughs> it gets a bit of a chore when you have to keep getting up off the couch to swap them over. So I'm not, uh, I'm not surprised they didn't really take off, to be honest, as as much as sort of DVDs did. Um, but I'm very happy to have these in the collection and the place i've positioned my dawn of the dead bust that i received from france which i showed you last month i've got this in the glass cabinet right behind it so it looks great so guys you will get to see that in all its glory on my next tour video which shouldn't be too much longer now um so those were laser discs i'm just looking for somewhere i can put them <laughs> right next up on the second hand market which was from eBay, was a special edition I have been wanting for years and years. So, guys, this is one of my holy grails. And some of you might be thinking it is just a wooden crate. And you're not wrong. It's just a wooden, wooden crate. This one came out in 2002 in France. And it was too expensive at the time for me to import in back then. Um, and it's just gained in value ever since um, so this one is still sealed it's still got the uh, the straps which haven't been opened and, and in the top it actually shows you what you get in it there is a model of spider-man just hiding behind that strap and you get the dvd and some art book you get a film cell as well you get a comic book and um, guys i am going to leave this sealed i'm i'm not going to open it up i'm not cutting these to to open it up to see what's inside the fact this one was made in nearly 20 years ago and it is still sealed and i will keep it sealed um, i'll keep it displayed proudly um because this edition i believe there is currently one on ebay now going for a, almost like one and a half thousand australian dollars it is mental I can promise you I didn't pay ne nearly that amount for it, not at all. Um, so when I saw it for such a good price, um, I jumped at it. I really did. So, yeah, the seller was great. He shipped it perfectly to Australia. It, uh, it sailed through customs, even though Australian customs can be a bit funny with wood. Um, as long as it's treated, then they're fine. So very, very cool edition. Limited edition of Sam Raimi's original Spider-Man in a proper wooden crate. So that is that. That's a beautiful showpiece for me. So very, very happy there, guys. Now, we have a few additions to go but i will quickly because i've missed this one over here um i picked up this in search of darkness documentary the Corey taylor edition this is a four and a half hour documentary of 80s horror basically the most popular horrors that appeared in the 80s so there's a lot of jason there's a lot of fred even though um robert england doesn't actually speak in the documentary which is a, a bit of a shame um it it is the definitive documentary for 80s horror they really have got so many people john carpenter's in there greg nicotero's in there um there's just name after name after name joe dante <laughs> just they're all, they're all going out of my head now but um yeah it is an amazing amazing documentary um i will say though i didn't learn as much as i was hoping to from it a lot of the things they did discuss i already knew um and they didn't really touch on a lot of the lower sort of b movies from that era even though a lot of the horror movies from the 80s are b movies all right z movies um they more focused on what was popular through the 80s and they focus on each year by year 
So there's a lot of Friday the 13th because they were churning them out nearly one a year. Um, a lot of Nightmare on Elm Street, two, three, four, you know. So, um, yeah, I, uh, I did enjoy it. And I bought the Corey Taylor edition simply because this was a limited release with him. They also did one with Elvira as well, which looked cool, uh, Cassandra Peterson. But uh, I picked up the Corey Taylor edition because this went for pre-order the same week last year in October that Slipknot unfortunately had to cancel their gigs here in Australia and I am a big Slipknot and Stone Sour fan I've seen Corey Taylor live many many times um and yeah I was a bit disappointed that they were going to be touring with Metallica and they cancelled James Hetfield was going to uh, rehab so yeah I was a bit bummed that I was going to miss them this this time um and then this edition came up for pre-order and I thought well Seeing as I'm going to miss seeing, um, seeing Slipknot in the flesh, this would be a nice sort of consolation prize. And because I purchased this limited edition in advance, my name's in the credits, which is pretty cool, even though I had nothing to do with it. Um, I wish I did, because it's, cool, uh, it's a cool documentary. <laughs> no one wants me sitting in those documentaries, waffling on. Um, but I did enjoy it, guys. It's four and a half hours. I, I watched it all in one sitting, and the time flew by. If you're a fan of horror, then definitely pick this up. It also did come with a poster as well, which I've since had fresh which I've also just put on the side there so he came with a very cool poster as well so yeah very very cool in search of darkness if you're a fan of 80s horror you watch that documentary now last but not least we'll go back to that gentleman Steve I was speaking to in Germany um, who produced and edited those um, violent shit movies um, I got in touch with him because he actually runs um, eight films which are a label making special editions so he, he's created a number of incredible, incredible collector's editions. Now, the first one I picked up from him is this amazing edition of Street Trash, the best belt movie. <laughs> this is a proper gory B movie. Um, so, yeah, this is incredible. And it actually comes with a bottle of the Viper. So anybody who's seen the movie, this will look familiar to them. One dollar for the bottle. <laughs> a bunch of street bums basically drink this Viper and it just makes them melt um so this one was number 77 out of 99 signed by holder fred the bum <laughs> um yeah so this uh, has the media book inside which is a soft cover media book and also a proper authentic replica of a viper bottle complete with like radioactive material on top which is amazing and it's got real liquid inside god knows what it actually is i don't think i'll ever dare try it but i think that's awesome if you love the movie to actually have a proper sort of prop as well which is awesome and the media book they've done such a great job eight films on the media book it is beautiful absolutely beautiful so eight films you can see at the top there the logo and the media book is a soft book um glossy imagery which is very very nice very psychedelic and the detail they go into actually in the pictures and the behind the scenes is amazing again it kind of makes me wish i could read german <laughs> um, but yeah the level of detail is incredible so guys the time is ticking on so i do have to unfortunately rush through these editions so that was street trash which is um, a beautiful piece to add to my collection now second to last is argento's Witches Trilogy, The Three Mothers, and this edition is stunning, absolutely stunning leather book with the three media books in there for Suspiria, Inferno, and Mother of Tears. I did do the trilogy when this arrived, but this edition is absolutely gorgeous. The gold etching on it and the leather and the wood is just quality, just screams quality. It's just elegant and beautiful they did produce a green edition of this um by eva Relli, which you'll see that book actually in inferno you actually see that the author of the three mothers um suspiria is still argento's masterpiece the sound the music from goblin the coloring the editing it is ferocious suspiria is a masterpiece inferno i'm not a huge fan of but it has got some cool scenes in it mother of tears very gory but ultimately nowhere near the quality of Suspiria so guys I will quickly show you these because we're running well out of time Suspiria we have got Inferno and then Mother of Tears with their Asia Argento oh, Dario's daughter so guys I wish I could talk more about that but we're already on 52 minutes and I think the battery's going to die soon so we'll get on to the last edition which is Dolph Lundgren's The Punisher. The Punisher. Now, guys, this bust was not made by eight films, and 
up until this point was still unsure who made this bust so if anybody out there is watching this video and knows who actually produced this <laughs> awesome punisher bust please do you know leave a comment because i would love to know which company actually made this and um, the gun is magnetic it's got two magnets and you can take it off and just sit that back on the skull logo and then what eight films have done on the back is they've actually produced a media book they produced three different covers for Dolph's movie so I picked this one here again this one is from eight films but they didn't manufacture the bust they've just sold or Steve from eight films sold me the media book with the bust but again we're not uh, we're not too sure who's actually made it but it's definitely been made for the purpose of holding a media book so yeah, it's uh, still a mystery to me, guys, who's actually produced this, but I think it's brilliant, um, especially giving uh, Dolph Lundgren's The Punisher such awesome treatment. Even though the logo doesn't really feature in the movie other than on the end of his knives, I think it's such an iconic logo that they have included it. There we go. Yeah, so that was The Punisher which is amazing so very very thankful to steve again in germany for helping me track down these last few editions he was a great guy to deal with and uh, when he saw my collection he was only too happy to help so that was really nice of him so guys that is everything today um <laughs> had to rush through that last part sorry um the tour video is incoming guys i have spoken to an electrician um, a friend of mine who's been around the room looking to see if he can put spotlights in the ceiling down each aisle and he thinks it is possible so we have scheduled that in for the end of march so in about four weeks time he's going to come in and actually do new lighting in the room so i'd like to present a new room tour once all that's been completed so until then guys there might be another one of these videos next month and then there'll be a tour video so again guys thank you so much for watching it means the world to me and i hope you have enjoyed all of these new additions to the collection and i will see you again next time all right thanks guys cheers bye